So here we have a work problem where the fuel tank on a truck has trapezoidal cross sections with the dimensions in feet shown in the given diagram. Assume that the truck's engine is three feet above the top of the fuel tank and that diesel fuel weighs approximately 53.1 pounds per cubic foot. Find the work done by the fuel pump in raising a full tank of fuel to the level of the engine. All right, so we know that this is a work problem because we are explicitly told in the problem that we wanna find the work done by the fuel pump. All right, and specifically, this is a particular type of a work problem that we refer to as a pumping problem because we are trying to pump a liquid out of a tank. In this case, the liquid that we're working with is diesel fuel. Typically in these problems, we're working with water, but this time we are working with diesel fuel. And so in order to solve a pumping problem, we need to use the following definite integral. The work done is equal to the weight density of the liquid times the integral from A to B of the cross-sectional area of a slice of the liquid in the tank, and we'll talk about that more in just a second, times delta X, which is the distance that the liquid needs to be pumped or the distance that the liquid needs to travel, times DX, which just represents the height of a particular slice of liquid in our tank. All right, and so now let's focus on what I mean by a slice of liquid in the tank. This tank right here represents the fuel tank of this truck. And in this problem, we wanna find the work done in pumping a full tank of fuel to the level of the engine in the truck. All right, so this entire tank is completely full of fuel. And so I'm gonna shade this in to represent that so that we know that this entire tank is full of fuel and we need to pump this out to the level of the engine for the truck. Okay, and so now that we filled in this tank, what this integral is doing to calculate the work done in pumping this fuel out of the tank is we are considering the incremental force on various slices of fuel throughout the tank. And what I mean by a slice of fuel is the small amount of fuel at a particular height in the tank that would look like this. This would be a thin slice of fuel in this tank. And we calculate the work done in pumping this one small slice of fuel out of the tank and then integrate that for the entire depth of the fuel in the tank. That will calculate the total work done in pumping all of the fuel out of the tank to the engine in the truck. All right, and we represent the height of that slice of fuel with x. This slice of fuel is at some height x that can range from a height of zero to a height of three since this tank is three feet tall, right? All of our dimensions are in feet. So this three means that our tank is three feet tall. All right, so the cross-sectional area in this integral a of x is referring to the cross-sectional area of a slice of fuel in the tank. And delta x is referring to the distance that any particular slice of fuel would need to travel to reach the level of the engine in the truck. Now it's important to note here that the truck's engine is three feet above the top of the fuel tank. So if this is a fuel tank, which has a height of three, then the engine is an additional three feet higher than the top of the tank. So if we say that up here is the location of the engine, this is a height of six feet, then a distance that a slice of fuel would need to travel to reach the engine would be the difference between that height X of the slice and the total height from the bottom of the tank to the engine, which is six feet. So if we subtract the height of the slice from the total of six feet, then the distance that a slice of fuel would need to travel would be six minus X. This right here, six minus X, that is the value of delta X. All right, so that is equal to delta x. Okay, so that takes care of delta x, but now let's focus on the cross-sectional area of our slice of fuel. Notice that it is a rectangular cross-section. Even though they're told that the tank has trapezoidal cross-sections, that's referring to the cross-sections in this direction, right? We have trapezoids right here. We would have trapezoids in this direction throughout the tank if we're moving from side to side. But the cross-sections of the tank from the bottom up are all rectangles, right? We have a rectangle here and we have a rectangle down here and all throughout the tank, we would have rectangles as our cross sections for the slices of fuel. So if we draw that on the side here, we'll have some cross section that looks like this for each of our slices of fuel. And so each cross section will have a length and a width, right? So the cross sectional area of those slices of fuel will be equal to the length 
times the width. We just have to determine what the length and width are for each of those cross sections. And if you look at our tank here, notice that the length of the cross sections is never going to change. It's always going to be a length of three. If you're looking at a slice of fuel at the bottom of the tank, it still has a length of three. And if you're looking at a slice of fuel at the top of the tank, the length is still three. What's different or what's going to change is the width of the slice of fuel. Right at the bottom, if we had a slice of fuel, the width is one. But as we move to the top, that width increases to be two. And so the width of those cross sections or the width of the slices of fuel is not the same throughout the entire tank. We need to find a way to represent that in terms of X. We need to relate the width of our slices of fuel to the height of that slice of fuel. All right, so if we're looking at our cross-sectional area here, we know that the length is three feet, but we don't know what the width is. We need to represent that in terms of X. And the way we can do that is to make use of some similar shapes. But before we do that, the first thing I wanna do is just draw out what one side of this tank would look like. Let's draw one of those trapezoidal cross sections that we would have if we're looking from side to side for this tank. All right, so we're going to have some type of trapezoid that looks like this, where this side measures three, the bottom measures one, and the top measures two. And note that we could break up this side of the tank or this trapezoid into two smaller shapes, right? This trapezoid could be broken up into two shapes, a rectangle and a triangle. This rectangle is going to have a width of one. And so since that is a measurement of one, that means it's also a measurement of one up here. So that means that this measurement right here, this side of this triangle would also be one, right? If this whole measurement is two and part of it is one, then the other part must also be one. All right, so I'm gonna rewrite this. We have a measurement of one right here and a measurement of one right there. So here's what we can say about the width of our cross sections for the slices of fuel. They're always going to be at least a width of one, right? It's never going to be smaller than one. If we start with slices at the bottom of the tank, we have a width of one. It starts out with a width of one and only gets bigger from there. So we know that the width will be one plus some additional width. And so this is where we can start to use the idea of similar shapes to represent that extra amount of width. And so here's what I mean. If we were to draw in this width of our cross-sectional area on this side of the tank, right? This trapezoid is representing the side of our tank. Let's draw this width right here on the side of our tank. It'll look something like this. This measurement right here, the height of that slice of fuel is still X. So we'll represent that with X. And then the measurement across would be the width of our slice of fuel. Now we would represent that with W, so I could write in W here, but for now I'm going to exclude the part of the width that we already know. We already know that the width is always going to be at least this measurement of one. What we are interested in is that extra amount of width, what is determined by this triangle. So instead of labeling the width there, I'm going to label the width right here, but I will use a different variable since it's not going to represent the entire width. I'm just gonna represent it with Z. It just represents part of the entire width. Whatever Z is equal to, we'll add one to it to get the full width of a cross-sectional slice. And so what we can do is just focus on this triangle here and then take a look at this smaller triangle that is formed by using the height of the slice and we would have similar triangles that we can compare, right? So we're going to have this triangle that uses the entire tank and then we'll have a second triangle that is just formed by the height of the slice of fuel in the tank. So for the entire tank, the top of this triangle measures one and the side measures three. And for the triangle for our slice of fuel, the height is X and that extra bit of width is represented with Z. So now we can relate the sides of these triangles to each other since they are similar triangles. The dimensions of this triangle are always going to be proportional to the dimensions of this triangle. All right, so what we can say is that one is to three as Z is to X. We can set up the following proportion. One divided by three is equal to Z divided by X. So now we can solve for Z to figure out what this extra bit of width would be and then add that to the width of one that each slice is going to at least be. All right, so let's solve for Z here. Let's multiply both sides by X and we'll find that Z is equal to X divided by three, right? One third times X 
is x divided by 3. So now we know that z is equal to x divided by 3. That's this extra bit of width. We just need to add that to the constant part of the width, which is that measurement of 1. So here's what we'll have. W, the width of our cross sections of our slices of fuel, will be equal to 1 plus z. And z is x divided by 3. So w is equal to 1 plus x divided by 3. 1 plus x divided by 3 represents the width for any slice of fuel throughout the tank that has a particular height x. Okay, so now that we know what the width is, we can represent the cross-sectional area of our slices of fuel. It's equal to the length times the width. We know that the length is 3 and the width is 1 plus x divided by 3. So this is equal to 3 times 1 plus x divided by 3. All right, now if we distribute, we can multiply 3 by 1 and x divided by 3. This 3 will cancel out with this 3. So this is equal to 3 plus x. All right, 3 times 1 is 3, and 3 times x divided by 3 is just x. And so what we find is that the cross-sectional area of a particular slice of fuel in the tank is just 3 plus x. We can now use that for our definite integral. Okay, so we have the cross-sectional area. We have delta x. Now all we have to determine is the weight density of our liquid and our bounds of integration. Okay, and in this problem, we're actually told what the weight density is of the liquid in this case, which is diesel fuel. We're told that it weighs approximately 53.1 pounds per cubic foot. The units are good there. We are working in terms of feet, right? Our dimensions are in feet. So our weight density should be measured in pounds per cubic foot. That makes sense. So let's write that down. The weight density rho times g will be equal to 53.1 pounds per cubic foot. And so that takes care of the weight density. Now the only thing left to determine are the bounds of integration. What two values of x are we going to integrate between? Right, the bounds of integration just represent the range of x values or the range of height values that we could choose for the fuel in the tank. In other words, how much fuel is in this tank? From what two height values does the fuel range between? In this case, the entire tank is full and the tank has a height of three, so we're gonna be integrating from a height of zero to a height of three. That's the range of x values that we could have for the height of our slices of fuel. So we can now begin to set up this definite integral to calculate the work done in this problem. This will be equal to the weight density of the diesel fuel, which is 53.1 times the integral from zero to three. We're integrating for all of the fuel in the tank from a height of zero to a height of three. And then we have the cross-sectional area times delta x. The cross-sectional area is three plus x. So we'll have three plus x times delta x, which is six minus x. So we'll have six minus x and then dx. Okay, and so now, we have a definite integral that will calculate the work done by the fuel pump in raising a full tank of fuel to the level of the engine in this truck. So now all we have to do is solve and evaluate this integral. Okay, and so the first thing that we should do here is multiply these two quantities together. We should expand them to get all of their terms that we'll need to integrate. So this will be equal to 53.1 times the integral from zero to three of three times six, which is 18. So we'll have 18 and then three times negative x. We'll have negative three x. Then we'll have x times six, which is six x. So we have plus six x and then x times negative x, which will give us negative x squared. Okay, now we can combine our like terms. We have negative three x and positive six x. If we add those together, we'll have positive three x. So this is equal to 53.1 times the integral from zero to three of 18 plus 3x minus x squared dx. Okay, so now what we can do is integrate each of these terms individually and then evaluate them at the bounds of integration. So let's do that next. This will be equal to 53.1 times the integral of 18 and the integral of a constant is just that constant times the variable of integration. In this case, we're integrating with respect to x so we'll have 18 times x. Then for 3x and x squared, or negative x squared, we're going to use the power rule for integration. 
we'll add one to the exponent and then divide by that new exponent. So if we add one to the exponent of x, we have x to the first power, so we'll have one plus one, which gives us x squared. So we'll have three x squared divided by that new exponent of two. And then we'll subtract the integral of x squared, which if we add one to that exponent, we'll have x cubed. And then once again, we'll divide by that new exponent of three. All right, and then this is all evaluated from zero to three. Okay, so now we just have to plug three into each of these terms and then subtract plugging zero into each of these terms. But do notice that if you plug zero into all these terms, you're just gonna get zero. 18 times zero is zero. Three times zero squared is zero. Divided by two is still zero. And zero cubed is zero divided by three, still zero. So we don't have to worry about explicitly writing that out. I'm just gonna plug three into each of these terms and then write minus zero, just to make a little note that zero plugged into these terms is just zero. We don't really need to go through all of that work explicitly. All right, so here's what we'll have. This is equal to 53.1 times 18 times three plus three times three squared divided by two minus three cubed divided by three minus zero. Okay, now 18 times three, that's 54. So this is equal to 53.1 times 54 plus three times three squared. Three squared is nine times three is 27. So we'll have 27 halves minus three cubed, which is 27 divided by three and 27 divided by three is nine. So we're subtracting nine and then 27 divided by two. That's the same as 13.5, right? 13.5 times two is 27. So I'm just gonna rewrite that. 27 halves is 13.5 and now we have 54 plus 13.5 minus nine, which is 58.5. So this is equal to 53.1 times 58.5. All right, and then 53.1 times 58.5 will give us our final answer that the work done in this problem is equal to 3,106.35 foot pounds. That is the final answer to this problem. And the units are foot pounds because that's the unit of work when you are working with feet and pounds in your problem like we were here. We had the weight density of diesel fuel in pounds per cubic foot and the dimensions of the tank were measured in feet. So our unit of work is foot pounds and not the metric unit of work, which is joules. All right, so that's it for this problem. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments. And if you wanna learn more about work problems, feel free to check out my video that is linked here on the screen. And if you wanna learn some more topics in Calculus 2, feel free to check out the playlist that I also have linked here on the screen. All right, but that's all I had for now. So I will see you next time.